Hey, Grant, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Man, good to see you again. Man, we're glad to have you back on the show. Last time you were here, you dropped so much wisdom and information that has blessed so many people. And we're going to link up in the show notes of this episode, Grant's last interview. It's something that you, if you have not already heard, you need to go back and hear his story from start to finish. It'll definitely, definitely bless you. But you're back today specifically because you have written a fantastic new book called Financial Freedom. And we are glad to dive into some of the things that you learned from your own personal journey to achieving financial freedom. Because we know a lot of people love the idea, the concept, the mystique of achieving financial freedom, but they don't necessarily connect the dots between where they are today and how to get to that place. So we're glad that you're able to come back on the show today. But for those who were not tuned in to the previous episode, can you just take a moment and introduce yourself to everybody and let them know what you're all about? Yeah, so I appreciate the introduction first. Um, I'm Grant Sabatier. I'm the author of Financial Freedom, uh, just released uh, financialfreedombook.com. Uh, it's my first book. I'm also the creator of Millennial Money, uh, which has had over 12 million visitors uh, since it launched in 2015, where I write about personal finance, entrepreneurship, and investing. Um, my specific fo focus is on uh, fast-tracking financial independence and financial freedom. So how can you make more money in less time to free up more time for a life you love uh, is the general focus. And I've been writing since 2015. And I started it after I became financially independent. So my financial journey really begins at the age of 24. I bounced around a lot of jobs after college and never, you know, found the right fit and found myself living back home with my parents, literally sleeping in the same bed that I slept in as a seven-year-old kid and really starting from scratch and, um, you know, didn't have a whole lot of marketable skills and taught myself how to run Google AdWords campaigns, so Google ad campaigns, and then ended up getting a job. And over the next five years and three months, I built two companies, um, ran digital marketing campaigns. I had 13 different income streams, um, everything from buying and selling domains to I had a moving company to writing white papers, a whole bunch of things. And the entire time I was investing every dollar that I made on the side and then about 80% of my full-time income with the sole goal of becoming financially independent so I could do really whatever I wanted with my time. It didn't mean I wasn't going to work, but I wanted the option to not have to work. After I made it happen, I started the blog. Uh, and then um, the number one question that I got over and over and over and over again was, how did you do it? How did you actually do it? And so that's why I decided to write a book because there's just way too much and way too many steps uh, to put in a single blog post, to put in 50 blog posts. And so I wrote the book. And now if anyone ever asks me any question ever about money, I could just be like, yo, you got to check out the book. <laughs> um, it's in there. The, um, that's another reason too. And I wanted something, you know, that was – that didn't just live online, you know, something you could pass to a friend who's struggling with money. The book is is dedicated to, you know, anyone who's stressed about money and wants more from life. You know, it's, it's you know, I wrote it for, I didn't write it for myself. I wrote it because, you know, I see way too many people struggling with money. You know, I'm very bad at most things in life, but money is one of those things that I get. And, you know, I wanted to, to kind of give back in that way. And that's who I am. And now I spend my time, you know, writing about money, speaking about money um, and, yeah, traveling the world talking about it. Now, I want to give crystal clear context for those who missed that episode. And that's why you should be subscribed to the His and Her Money show so that you never miss an episode. So Grant's story is when he was back home with his parents, he found himself with two dollars and twenty six cents to his name. And from that point. To five years later, he had over a million dollars to his name. So what Grant is about to share is not something he heard about. This is something that he figured out and he walked out. And now 
He took the time to put it together, to synthesize everything that he learned along the way so that others can follow in his footsteps to financial freedom. Let, let's talk about that term financial freedom, because I think if left to 10 people, you might get 10 different interpretations. So for you, you've walked this out, you've studied it, you've wrote, written about it. What exactly is financial freedom and why is it something that we all should be in pursuit of? You make a great point. Financial freedom means something different to everyone. Um, For some one person, it could mean being out of debt and then they're able to sleep at night and they feel free. For another person, it's having six months of expenses and not, you know, worrying if, you know, that their job, you know, boss is going to fire them, you know, and that helps them sleep at night. And people need radically different amounts of money to feel free. I have a friend who makes seven thousand dollars a year and travels full time, and he's free as a bird, man. And then I have friends who make, you know, two hundred thousand dollars a year and they're stressed all the time, and they think they need ten million dollars to feel free, and you know they're stuck and they feel stuck. So financial freedom can mean whatever you want it to mean. Um, it's that moment when, you know, you're not stressed about money. It's having enough money to sleep at night. It's having enough money that you're not worried about losing your job. It's having enough money that, you know, you can take care of what you need to take care of, whether it's your kids or yourself or your family or your parents or all the above, or having enough money to give to your community and do what you love. I mean, financial freedom is, it's, it's, it's a feeling. It's Mm -hmm. a, uh, it's an essence, you know, it's, um, it's it's that moment when you feel at peace with money. I mean, that's really what it is. And radically different amounts for radically different people. And the important thing is to figure out what it means to you mm-hmm. and realize that no matter what it means to you, you can get there. And, you know, in the book I talk, you know, I – you know, lay it out in seven different levels. I talk about financial freedom as it's kind of seven levels and level six is financial independence, which is when you have enough money to last you for the rest of your life, or you have enough recurring income, you know, whether it's from rentals or business to support you for the rest of your life. You know, if you've got a couple rental properties that are paying enough money to cover your living expenses, you're financially independent. You don't need millions of dollars. You've already made it. You know, so there's a couple ways to get to financial independence. And for me, that was really kind of my initial goal. Actually, my initial goal was just, I want to make a million dollars. It was as simple as that. Um, If that was my only goal, I probably never would have made it. And one of the things I realized, you know, once I got to financial independence and had over a million dollars was that I had 95% of the benefits, you know, when I had a year of expenses saved. You know, I thought that getting to this point and having a million dollars, I'd feel so much freer and so much different and so much more incredible. And yeah, it's a great feeling. It's a great accomplishment. But you can have more freedom in your life much, much faster than that. And that's one of the things in the book is, you know, focus on getting from, you know, level one to level two first. You know, that million dollars will come. That you know, financial independence will come, but, you know, get to that point where you can sleep at night and where you don't feel stressed about money, whatever that means to you. Yeah. I think you did a fantastic job kind of, um, breaking that down because I think that even when you hear the phrases financial freedom or financial independence or the acronym fire, you know, you have, it seems like the grand Canyon between where you are and the finish line of financial independence, because you're just thinking about, I need a million. I need a uh, half a million. I need two million. I need, like your friend said, I need 10 million to be able to quote unquote, be financially free. But like you said, it could be at, uh, and for, for lack of a better term, as simple as getting a couple of rental properties just to cover your bills. Because now when you have an investment that covers your expenses, you're free because you are now work optional. You can go to work still. You don't, You don't necessarily have to quit your job. You can still go to work. But now it's I'm going to work because I want to. I'm choosing to not because I have to. And there is a very, very deep sense of freedom just from getting to that. Um, You kind of alluded to it. I was going to talk about it later, but let's talk about it since we're here right now. It was it was good for me to read. Um, You have outlined there are levels uh, seven, I believe, seven levels to financial freedom. Can you kind of walk us through the levels again? Because I want people to understand that you don't have to focus, 
you don't have to go from level zero to level seven. You know, there are some things you can do in between that's giving you the sense of freedom that you need to keep going. So can you kind of break down how you talk about the levels that are involved in this? Yeah. So the first one is just clarity, you know, just clarity on where you're at. You know, you know, you might owe money that you don't remember that you owe. You might, you know, be making less money than you think, you know, just getting real clarity on where you're at. That's the first step. And anyone can do that. So you can get to step one immediately, you know, not immediately, but, you know, within an hour or two. And a lot of people don't get to that first step because money is really scary. And getting to that first step, you know, first time I did it was really scary, a lot of anxiety. But, you know, you can't move forward if you don't know where you are. And so getting clarity is really, really important. Um, level two is self-sufficiency. And self-sufficiency is when you get to the point where, you know, you're not taking money from your parents. You're not, you know, sneaking money from their wallet. You're not – someone's not paying your bills. It's when you're living on your own. You know, so you're self-sufficient. You've got a job. You're making money in some way and you're living on your own. I think, you know, a lot of people can get to level two. Um, that's kind of where I started. Um, and then level three is when you escape living paycheck to paycheck. And so that is really, really important. So level three is, you know, you can decide what that number is. Um, you know, typically it's going to be three to six months, uh, of your, of your, you know, monthly expenses just, you know, and this is in addition to an emergency fund, you know, you want to have a little extra saved. Um, and so escaping living paycheck to paycheck. So if your company fails or if your boss fires you or if something happens, you know, you're, you're, you're not out of luck because one of the things is it's extremely expensive to be poor and it's, you know, it is extremely expensive because when you don't have money, there's fees on top of fees and you get charged more and you have to pay more interest. And so escaping that and being able to, you know, six months, okay, if I lost my job, I'm going to be okay. That is so essential. Um, and then level four is between one and two years of expenses. And so that's kind of the next level. So if you spend 40000 or $50,000 a year, it's eighty dollars to $100,000 saved. And I, you know, I get this question of, you know, should that be in retirement account? Should that be in liquid? Um, I, I like to say it's kind of whatever makes you feel comfortable, um, you know, and for some people that's having it in – you know, outside retirement accounts in addition to their retirement accounts. You know, as you know, you get penalized if you take money out of your retirement accounts. But I like to say, you know, have it be a mixture. You know, so you want to have it be a blend where, you know, if you spend $50,000 a year, you have $100,000 saved, and that's in a mixture of retirement uh, and other accounts. And when you get to two years of expenses saved, you get a lot more freedom. You get a lot more options. Um, you no longer not only have to worry about getting laid off or your company f getting fired. You can actually have more freedom and flexibility to quit the job that you don't like and 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 take a little time to find a new one. You know, you don't have to jump from ship to ship to ship. You can also take some time. You know, if you have a family member you want to spend more time with, you can take some. You know, three months off. Uh, you know, or quit your job for a while and spend time with them. And you can also take some time off to figure out what you really want to do in life. And this is one of those things too, because you know, a lot of people will tell you find your purpose, find your why, find what makes you happy, but you might not know, and that's okay. And, you know, I didn't know uh, when I started my journey and I needed time and space to figure that out. And, you know, don't feel bad if you don't know what your purpose in life is. That's OK. That's totally normal right. uh, or even what makes you happy. I mean, that's something, uh, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. So, so don't put stress on yourself to find what you're passionate about right away if you don't know. Um, and so you get to that moment where, you know, you can buy yourself some space and time um, and then level four is when um, – or level five is when you have you know two-plus years of living expenses, and that's when you're kind of in this grayer area where it's you – know, you're not all the way at financial independence, but you have you know, maybe three years of expenses or four years or ten years, you know, whatever it may be. And that's when you're in the area where you can you – know, in a lot of cases, 
if you're unhappy with your life and you have that much money, there's something really wrong. And I meet a lot of people like that. I meet a lot of people that have, you know, three hundred thousand dollars saved, and it's you know six or seven times their living expenses, and they're stressed out, and they're they're upset because they can't spend more time with their kids. And when you talk with them, you know, it's it's very clear that they feel like they need to keep working, keep progressing. When in reality, what they need to do is stop and take some time, spend it with their family, or change to a job that maybe pays a little less but gives them more time. I can't tell you how many people I've met who tell me, you know, I'm working so hard to spend more time with my kids. And I ask them, well, how much time are you spending with your kids? Not much. And then I'm said, well, why don't you take a different job or negotiate a different benefit to spend more time with your kids? And, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic in that sense that we work so hard to spend time with the people we love when t- time is, is uh, you know, money is infinite. You can always go out and make more money, but you can never get back this moment. You can never get more time. And so prioritize the people you love in your life and the things you like to do. You know, if you've got a parent who's getting older and you want to spend more time with them, um, take a leave of absence from your job. If you have enough money, quit your job. Spend more time with them. That's what you're going to remember uh, later in life, not that you worked an extra six months and saved an extra, you know, 20000 or $10,000. And so that level five is, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're feeling good. You got plenty of money, you know, everything, it's gravy. Um, and then, you know, level six is financial independence when you have enough money, as we talked about, either from, you know, recurring revenue like rental income or business income. Rental's the easiest example. I mean, that's the fastest path to financial independence. You know, looking back, and I write about this in the book, I didn't go this way, but more and more people, you get a couple of properties and you're golden. I mean, somewhere like Chicago, you know, where you're at, it's just like you get a couple places and rents and the properties go up and the rents go up and and you're set. I mean, you're really set for life. And so, you know, definitely look into that. Or, you know, you save enough money that you can live off uh, another type of investment, you know, whether it's a million dollars, you know, it's probably less than you think. And that's one of the things in the book I tried to do is that the most important question isn't how much money you need. It's what kind of life do you want to live? Mm -hmm. That's the important question. What kind of life do you want to live? And then the second question is how much does it cost to live that life? And when I went through that process, what I realized was uh, most of the things that I enjoy in life don't cost a lot of money. Walking my dog in the park, hanging out with my wife, grabbing a few beers with my friends, you know, playing soccer in the park on a Saturday. You know, those are all things that are almost free. And that's what makes me happiest. And so how can you align your life to maximize the opportunity to do those things, you know, as opposed to how much money do I have now? What kind of life do I need to live? And I think people often get those mixed up. And if you if you ask that question honestly, um, you know I'm not here to tell you how much money to spend. At, you know, but just realize that there's always going to be a trade off. And so I meet people and they're like, I need five million dollars because I spend two hundred thousand dollars a year. I need to. I'm going to have to work forever. And I, you know, say, you know, you're choosing to spend. Two hundred thousand dollars a year. It's your it's your choice. You could you could not do that. You could move to a smaller house in a different neighborhood and um, not buy two new cars every three years. I mean, you you, you it, you're choosing to do this, um, and you're actually asking the question like, what kind of life can I live with the money I have instead of what you know? How much money do I need to live the life that I want? And just realize that. I'm not going to tell you you can't buy that car. Just realize what you're making the trade-off for. And so, yeah, level six is financial independence. And then level seven is abundant wealth, which is more than enough money. Uh, And you get to a point, once you get to financial independence, you know, some crazy things happen. Um, Like for me, the more money I made, the less I spend because just having the ability to buy something is enough. And I didn't expect that. You know, and I actually really value how hard I worked for money. And this is one of those transformations too, is once you get from level two to three and then three to four, you're gonna have so much momentum and you're gonna be so fired up that getting to the next level is is fun. 
You know, this is something where, you know, savings an opportunity. It's not a sacrifice. You know, you start you you realize that you're completely in control of your life and your destiny and that money truly is freedom and you have the ability to make it and spend it and use it however you want to live whatever life you want. And then so level seven, abundant wealth is when you have more than enough money. And at that moment, you know, you can really start giving back. Um, of course, you can start spending more money. But, you know, if you get to financial independence and level six, it's almost inevitable you're going to get to level seven um, because the skills that you've acquired along the way, your money's just going to going to keep growing. Um, and then you have the opportunity to give back or you know, but really focus on getting to that next level, getting to try thinking, as we talked about, jump into millionaire status or financial independence. Those are great goals to have, but take it a level at a time, because if, you know, if you just think about that million dollars, it's going to be a lot harder to get there. I always like to say, just, I focus on what I call the double up strategy, which was whenever I saved amount of money, I always tried to double it. And it ended up taking me more time to do that as the numbers got bigger, but it was a lot easier goal to hit than a million dollars. So those are the seven levels of financial freedom incredible, in the book. Incredible, incredible stuff right there. Now, you share also some, some very interesting research uh, in your book where you said that the average millennial currently is saving three to five percent of their income, which in, you know, compared to some other demographics, they're doing above average. But you're saying that three to five percent is actually not enough to achieve your uh, financial goals later on down the road. Can you elaborate on why that's the case? Yeah, I mean, five, even five to ten percent is not enough. And when I say it's not enough, it's not enough to have enough money to retire in less than forty five maybe 40, 45 years. So you might, if everything works out perfectly and we know life usually, usually doesn't, then saving five to 10%, you might get there. But why, why risk your future on chance? Um, when literally move into a smaller apartment or house, you can save 20% more of your income, you know? And when you go from like 5% to 30%, all of a sudden you've cut a 45 year retirement horizon down to like 20 years or less. If you can go from 30% maybe to 50%, you've dropped it from like 20 to 25 years to like 10 or less. And that's one of the, if you can get to saving 50% of your income, man, you're, it's all, it's just, your money's just going to grow so fast. You're not even going to know what you, what you saw. And you know, you're probably thinking, how am I going to save 50% of my income? And I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's easy because it's not. Um, if, if you want to do that, you're going to have to live differently than most people. Um, there's also, you know, depending upon how much money you make, there's a limit to how much you can cut back. I real, realized that pretty fast too. You know, there's, there's only so much so little you can spend. I mean, you can go crazy and live in a tent in your friend's backyard if you want. And some people do that, man. Some people do that. Like I met one kid, he's like talking me up and he's like, oh yeah, you know, I've been saving money. I've been living in my friend's kitchen cupboard. Like one of these old kitchen, cu- like, uh, you know, like where they used to have the spices and the, like a, a kitchen, what do you call it? Like a pantry. Mm-hmm. He was living in the pantry. <laughs> It's like cost, costing him fifty dollars a month to live in his pantry. First off, I was like, I don't know what one of your friends would let you live in their pantry, but you know, you could do that stuff if you want. You know, when you're twenty two years old and you're single, uh, you know, you can do that kind of stuff. Obviously, you can't do it when, when you're when you have a family. But man, you know, there's a limit to how much you can cut back. But um, you know, there, there's really not a limit to how much money you can make, and that's that's the cool thing because, you know. Once again, it's not easy to make extra money, but it's never been easier. Mm-hmm. You know, there's blueprints, there's strategies in the book. I walk through a whole process on how to pick and start and grow a side hustle. Um, and it's something that's worth trying. Everyone should try it. It's easier than you think. Let me tell you that. Now, you, you mentioned earlier that you you've gotten all the way up to putting away 80 percent of your income and you're not a single guy living in your friend's kitchen cupboard so <laughs> i mean you you're you're married you, you have a family so what how did you position yourself in such a way that you're a, able to maintain a, a healthy quality of life on 20 percent of the income that you bring home 
Yeah, uh, that's a good question. So I really know kind of what makes me happy. I'm in a fortunate position that I don't like buying a lot of things. Um, I'm obviously, I think, an extreme example. It's really important to mention that. Um, I'm by no means normal <laughs> um, in, in, in a lot of respects, and that's okay. I mean, you're probably a lot better at literally, you know, whoever's listening, 99% of the things that I am in life. Um, I struggle. I have a hard time remembering to make the bed, fold my clothes and work. You know, like it's like, it's like, this is like my only superpower. Um, but I, you know, it's something that, uh, you get, you get better at over time once you realize what you're trading for. And that was one of the huge shifts in my in my life. And you know, I built a calculator that's at financialfreedombook.com. Um, it's in the book. I don't know if you've seen the calculators, but you know, I, I built nine of them. They're they're on the book website. And one of them, the financial freedom calculator, you just put in your numbers, and it tells you how much freedom you're trading when you buy something. No matter you know, you just put in your own numbers. And I figured out pretty early on that. Every hundred dollars that I was spending, I was trading six days in the future. I'd have to work an additional six days, and sometimes those numbers get real crazy. You know, if you're thinking about buying a twenty thousand dollar car, one of the things you don't realize is that you're going to have to work an extra three and a half years in the future to buy that car. And you might say, "Hey, this is totally worth it for me. You know, I'm I'm worth it. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know." Uh, maybe you love your job. If you love your job, congratulations, you've won the game. Uh, but you know, it's you just realize what, what trade off you're making, and that was the huge shift for me. Where I was like, freedom. I mean, that was the name. I, mean, I was just like, I want, I want. You know, I was addicted to money in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it, I wouldn't say that a lot of things I did was were healthy, but I learned a lot. And the thing about it is, you don't have to be as crazy as I was or work 80 hours a week to make more money in less time and really have an awesome life. I mean, these strategies apply to anyone. I mean, that's the thing, no matter where you're starting from, whether you're listening to this, you're in debt, whether you have $200,000, whether you're making $10 an hour or $100 an hour, that's what I wrote the book for. It's a scalable strategy that no matter where you're at, it's designed to get you to the next level because man it's uh it's 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 not that complicated let me just say it's not that complicated yeah it's about getting the knowledge and then executing the complicated part is just not knowing it's it's remaining in a state of ignorance when you don't have to you got you know resources out here like your book financial freedom that just you dive deep and you say things that This book is full of paradigm shifts and I love it um, because (laughs) you don't just say like these things that are like that people would think would be out there because they go against the grain of what we've been taught. But you back it up. You break it down like this is why I'm saying what I'm saying. Uh, One of those is which was really, um, I think, something that people really need to pay attention to. Um, You said that. Um, you were talking about how, you know, we're given the advice of work 40 years to work hard, put put a little money up in your 401k and then you can retire and then you'll be fine. You know what I mean? You, you graduate college, 21, 22, 23, and you work until 65. That's the way we do things around here. And, and, and you state that that is a bad blueprint. So talk to us about why that's a bad blueprint to follow. You only get one life. Um, you can always go out and make more money. You can never get back this time. And time changes as you get older. No matter how you old you are, time changes. And you know, you're no matter how old you are, you're in the prime of your life right now. The thing is, you're never going to have more energy than you have today, probably. You know. Um, not you think about a nine to five or a nine to six job those are the premium hours of the day not all time is created equal and you know if you've got a stressful job you're waking up early and you're sitting on the bus you're driving to work and so you know you get up and your your whole day pretty much revolves five days a week revolves around work um whether it's commuting getting there working coming home de-stressing 
You know, you, you, most of your day is eaten up by work, your quality, your premium time. And if you love your job and it makes you happy and fulfilled and full and it's something you want to do forever, God bless you. Cause that, that, I mean, seriously, you're extremely lucky. Um, most people don't have that. And you look at the data and 70% of the American population, they're disengaged at work. You know, almost 70% have less than a thousand dollars saved. You know, people, most people in this country don't like their jobs and that's really that, you know, it makes me sad. And, um, at the end of the day, you have to decide what your time is worth and what you're willing to trade for it. And, um, you know, you don't want to wait 40 years to start living your life because 40 years from now, you're not going to move as fast. And one of the things, you know, people change, we grow, our dreams change your dream today that you have to travel the world in 20 years. You might not have that dream. That dream might be lost. And so it's important to capture your dreams while you have them. And, you know, you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to go all in, but put life before money every time. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you shouldn't save. That doesn't mean you shouldn't invest. In fact, it makes saving and investing even more important because you're investing in a you that hasn't even been created yet, a you that you don't even know. And so, you know, you're the best investment you can make. And it's like, why not set yourself up so in five years you have more opportunities, you know? And that's one of those things, man, like growing up, my parents are in their 60s. They're still working. All their friends are still working. And, you know, I heard for years and years about we're going to travel here and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I can tell you one thing, their friends are dying or their friends are getting sick. Or, you know, they're leaving a whole trail of, you know, dreams they weren't able to pursue. And, you know, there's just studies around this. You know, Bronnie Ware, the woman I quote in the book, you know, she wrote this book, Five Regrets of the Dying. And she was a hospice nurse. And, you know, two of the top regrets are, um, you know, I worked too hard and I didn't get to accomplish most of my dreams. You know, and it's just like... We know – I mean like that speaks for itself. I mean like you don't have to be 80 years old to learn that lesson. Someone's telling you it. You know, that's one of the things is like we spend so much of our lives going around trying to learn things that have already been learned. You know, we're building on you know, years and years of human history. So listen to that. That means something. Don't just let that pass through your ears. I mean – um, so just, you know, working 40 years at a job you don't like just to make ends meet. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's the, that's the status quo, man. That's just like everyone who literally every single person who's listening or wa- listening to this or watching this right now, there, there's more life than that. You, you can have so much more life than that. And it's not that far away. And so many people think, you know, you got to wait till 40 years, you got to be all in, you got to, you know, risk it all. But I really feel in all the thousands of people I've met and talked to about money, most people, you know, the common thread, most people are like two or three steps away from a life they'd really love, you know, just two or three steps. And often two of those steps are money related. They just don't have enough money to make the choices that they want in life. And so start there. That's something you can fix no matter where you're at. And then it's up to you how you want to spend your time. But, you know, you have a lot more control than you probably think you do. Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you work so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit crushmymortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's crushmymortgage.com.
You know, when it comes to finances, money, you know, there's lots of numbers out there associated with it. But you say that the most important number that we need to know when it comes to our finances is our net worth. Why do you feel that way? It doesn't matter how much money you make. Uh, What matters is, uh, you know, how much you'd have if you sold uh, everything that you have and paid down your debts. So it's that, I call it, you know, it's your net worth. In the book, I call it your walk away money. You know, it's the money that if you pay down your debts and you sell everything, you can say, I'm, you know, I'm piecing out, I'm walking away. I'm going to put all my money in a suitcase and go, you know, live in the woods, live somewhere else. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out of town. And so that that's what your net worth measures. It's your, you know, assets, uh, it's your, um, you know, assets minus your liabilities. So anything that you could sell for money that's worth anything, um, you know, your house, the cash you have, your investments minus the debt that you owe. And so that's the important number to keep track of. And it's so easy to keep track of. You know, I meet so many people and they're like, I'm making six figures, but you probably didn't know this, but most people that make six figures still live paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. It's real. You know, uh, we yeah, interviewed totally. some. yeah, I mean, that's, and, and that's, that's, they have such an opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, uh, and, you know, so measuring your net worth, you know, the cool thing about it, it's, it's your financial scorecard and it might be negative right now, or it might be low, but it's like playing a game. And one of the things you'll see is once you start seeing it grow a little bit, it starts to get addicting, mm-hmm. you know, and then you keep looking at it and you, instead of looking at it once a month, you start looking at it you know, every couple of days and then you start seeing it grow and then you're like, oh, wow, you know, when you get that bonus from work, you got a couple of choices. Instead of spending that bonus, you're like, hey, I can add it. I can add it to my game. I can put it in this account. I'm going to watch my net worth grow. You know, I got really, really crazy. I have some weird tendencies where like I look at my net worth and if it was like you know, off a number, I'd like put more money in to, to, so it would be an even number. You know, and things like that. Like I'd always try. Like if I was close to twenty thousand, I had like eighteen thousand nine hundred. I'd put eleven hundred in so I could get to twenty thousand. Because I was always just trying to inch up. And you know that stuff, man. That's simple, but it really, really works. Yeah, no, that's real. And I, I love the fact that you said make it a game because it, it really doesn't matter. And this is where we're at. You know, we we're, we're tracking our net worth. We have goals, you know, certain benchmarks that we're trying to hit. And it, and it does become a game. You start to uh, make different decisions because now you're weighing, how is this going to affect my net worth if I go this route versus if I go that route? And you start to just process your money and your financial transactions a lot differently. You have a lot more intentionality behind the decisions that you're making and it's it's you taking charge it's you taking ownership it's not you sitting in the passenger seat anymore just well you know when i get 65 you know I, we'll see where we, we we'll see where we end up but right. it's you being very proactive and in control of where you end up and and I, what grant is saying is absolutely correct it just psychologically even if you even if you do the math and you say man it's it's negative 15,000 but next month it might be negative 14,720 you know what i mean you yeah. see the progress and you will be motivated by that and you get more comfortable with it that's one of the things is like money's really stressful and really intense and really scary when you first start but it's kind of like meeting a new person you know and then you start to get used to that person and then you start to like that person and the you know the fifth time you see them you know you think they're funny and you like hanging out with them more you know it's like that man that's why like you know i call it my money meditation i didn't call it that when i was doing it but i still do this to this day man i did it this morning i wake up you know make some coffee i sit there i open up you know mint and you know i look at my net worth and i look at what's going on and i just start the day thinking about my money and i can tell you what that does is i go through the day and i spend less because I saw my number that morning and I wanted to grow. I don't want it to go down. And, you know, I also, it puts me in the mindset of just like, okay, how am I going to get to that next level? What am I doing in my life to make more money and focus on my money? You know, it's, it's, and then you get excited, you get comfortable. I mean, it's, 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 it feels good. And that's one of those things is once money starts feeling good, man, it's the sky, the sky's really the limit. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do you have any advice for those who 
Um, they're in a relationship, they're married, and they're fired up. They're listening to you like, yeah, this is what we need to do. But then their spouse is a little like traditional, like, ah, what? it doesn't take all that. Look, it is what it is. This, this is where we are. This is the hand we've been dealt. And they're just not as fired up as as you are when it comes to trying to achieve financial freedom. Any advice for that person on how to cope or or how to get their spouse to see what they see? One piece of advice, go back to that first question. Instead of what kind of life do I want to live, what kind of life do we want to live? You know, this is the problem that couples make. They start with the numbers. Hey, honey, we overspent here. Or we spent too much money. Or, you know, look, we owe all this and all this debt. It's numbers, 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 numbers. Instead of, hey, where do we want to be in three years? Where do we want to live? What do we want to do? Write it out. Write down a picture of your life. If you're unhappy with where you're at, sit down and figure out where you want to go together. I mean, I can't think of a better thing to do over a bottle of wine or beer or you know, a cup of coffee than sit with your partner and talk about your dreams. Mm -hmm. And those talk about your dreams and your partner might say, ah, that's not possible. We could never do that. We're never going to be there. We're never going to be able to afford that. And that's your, that's, your, that's, your, that's your cue. Well, you know what? I think we can. Mm -hmm. And here's how. Yeah. You know, and it's like you start and, and it might take a couple of those meetings, but if they see that you're committed to helping them live their dream and make it happen and then then, you know, kind of the the proofs in the pudding, you know, then you got to live it. You know, you can't just say all that with your partner and then the next month, you know, they see you blow a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to practice what you preach. But I, I've seen over and over again, couples you know, it works. It's just they start dreaming together and then realize that things that neither of them thought were possible, they can make happen. And then they make a few of them happen and they get a couple of those small wins and they save a thousand dollars together. And it's like, whoa, you know, it wasn't I did that. We did that. You know, even if one of you in the couple, you're the one who's managing the money and you know, celebrate the victories together. It's not I saved a thousand dollars, even if you're the one that put it in the account. Hey, look what we did. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's man. Once they realize that you're thinking about them, and you're thinking about your dreams together, that's just man. That's that's it's uh. That that's where I, that's where I think people should start. And then you know you don't have to send them a bunch of blog posts or send them a bunch of books. Um, but, you know, it, it might not hurt to have that conversation and say, hey, you know, I've been reading Financial Freedom and, you know, I, I see how this is possible. And then, you know, maybe leaving the book sitting on the kitchen table, you know, maybe maybe when you go to work, leave it on the kitchen table. Or maybe when you go out that weekend, leave it on the kitchen table. You know, I mean, it doesn't hurt to place it somewhere where they can take a look at it. You know, it's it's you know, you can't push too hard, but, you know, it, it, it's it's possible, man dreams it's it's you got to dream together speaking of that i mean what are some of the things that you've been able to do in your own life as a result of you putting in the work the effort the blood sweat and tears to get to financial freedom yeah so uh i mean i feel very grateful for the life that i'm able to to live um you know, I do a lot of traveling. I don't do a ton of traveling. Um, you know, I'm very, very mission driven in my life now. Um, I can tell you one thing that my my passion, my purpose uh, found me. I didn't find it. Um, it it came barreling down uh, my my doorstep. You know, I, I didn't I didn't seek it out. And so that's one of those things going back to if you don't know what your purpose is in life or what what you know what what you want to do, that's okay. That's normal. Um, I didn't know what my purpose in life was until uh, you know this showed up. And so now I'm in a phase in my life where I feel very uh, blessed. Uh, to, to be able to share and help others and connect with others. Um, being financially independent has more than anything given me peace of mind. And, you know, it took me a while to realize this, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. You know, I wish I would have known what I know now back then. And that's why I wrote the book, man. I wrote the book 
I think, you know, I wrote the book for my 20 year old self. I really did. You know, I've read over 400 money books in my life and um, I learned a lot from them, but I learned so much more from my own experience. And, you know, I put everything in there that I wish I would have known that I think everyone should know about money. Um, if you've never read a money book, it's got everything in there you need. Um, I wanted it to be comprehensive enough, but, uh, yeah, I feel, you know, one of the things I learned looking back is that to me, success wasn't about money at all. It was about peace. And that was one of those things, man. I was I was in England. I was sitting on the coast at the edge. I was sitting at what's one of the most Western, I think it might be the most Western part of Europe. And you know, I was out on the coast. I was at an Airbnb. I'd been just finished the book, and I had this. I woke up one morning. I was just looking at the water, and I had this weird feeling, you know. And I was like, "What is this feeling?" I, I didn't recognize it at all. And I realized it was the first time in my life that I'd felt at peace. Hmm. First time. Wow. And that um, that wasn't that long ago, man. That was like six months, seven months ago, and. Um, the thing is, I couldn't chase that. You can't yeah. chase that. You have to arrive at it. And, you know, that peace is already within you. You know, you and even even financial freedom, like you can choose your relationship with money. And that's one of those things that I didn't realize that even happiness wasn't the goal for me, man. It was just being able to wake up in the morning and just feel at peace. You know, that I, I have a purpose in the world and I'm here and I mean, that is just a blessing. But I don't know if I could have had that without financial independence. What I know is I didn't have nearly enough time or space in my life to let peace arrive. Mm -hmm. You know, I was so busy. I was so packed. Every 15 minutes of my day was scheduled. And so the biggest blessing for me is sometimes just you got to let life happen you got to exist you know you got to create the time and space to figure something out you got to sit in not knowing and that's one of those things man that i i mean it, you don't know until you experience it and that's been above anything else um just that sense of calm and um you know i'm not stressed all the time i'm not freaking out i you know the only thing that you carry with you Anywhere you go is yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's for me, man. That's incredible. That's incredible. Great, great perspective there. So, I mean, if someone's listening and they're like, yeah, this is this is this. This is what I need to be doing. And they're serious about moving their life, pivoting in the direction of achieving financial freedom. What's a couple of things they need to do right away after listening to this interview? We should buy the book. No. Number one. That's right. <laughs> no. No, but I, I really do think it's important to I mean it's like you could probably find it, you know, hardcover for fifteen dollars, it's on sale now, or get the ebook for thirteen dollars. You know, it's I tried to write the highest ROI money book out there, man. I want it like it's it should be worth a thousand times that you know what I mean? Like so Take it seriously and commit to yourself by being like, okay, I'm going to spend four hours of my life listening to, to this or reading this. The next step is to get that next level of education. You know, it's to go back and listen to all your episodes and watch your videos and, you know, make it intentional. You know, put, put it, it's, it learn, you know, you want to learn. And then after you kind of set that intention that you're going to take it seriously in your life, First step is you got to figure out where you're at, man. And what I mean by that is you got to look at the life you're living. Mm -hmm. Before you even look at the money, look around, look at what you have, look at who you're hanging out with, look at where you're living, look at who's around you and ask yourself is is this enough for me? Yeah. Great. great. You know, that that's where you want to start. Yeah. And if you if you do that and, you, and the answer is yes, you don't really need to go any further. You know, you've won the game, man. You've re you've really won the game. Congratulations. But if if there's more of a hunger for more in life, you know, you got to take stock of where you're at. So look at the life you're living, um, and then think about the life that you want to live. You know, and really really think hard about what would make you happy, and don't don't feel bad or wrong. 
if what would make you happy is something pretty simple. You know, may, maybe it's having your own apartment. Maybe it's owning your own house. You know, that that's an incredible goal. Maybe it's owning your own house. You know, yes. Like, there's a reason people own house. There's like, it's, you know. And so think about that kind of life that you want to want to live. And then move into the money. You know, take a real hard look at where you're at, no matter where you're starting from. Um, take stock of, you know, what you owe, how much you're making. And then after that, don't waste any more time. Start with your full-time job. How can you optimize your full-time job? Even if you don't like your full-time job, it's what's paying you right now. And how can you make more money doing what you're already doing while you figure everything else out? Because time's ticking and the book is designed to help you make more money in less time by not wasting time. And so you got to start, optimize your full-time job. There's a whole process in there you know you read through about you know how to figure out how much you're getting paid and how much you're worth and all those good things and start there start at your full-time job you know the book i say use it as a launching pad because that's really what it is you got to start where you're at Mm -hmm. and figure out those two or three things that are going to have the biggest impact and then get to the get to step two when you're ready to get to step two i see far too many people they get pumped up and then they try to jump to level four and then they just fall down the ladder. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So take it as fast as you want, as fast as you can, as fast as you're comfortable. And it's a path that works and just commit to it, stay on it. And I can tell you like the first 60, 90 days are the hardest. And then you're going to get real excited because you're going to realize that you know, you're going to get a raise from your boss. Or you're going to have gotten a new job or maybe you've gotten a bonus or maybe you've made a little money on the side. And all of a sudden you realize that you have more control and more power and feel more empowered than you've ever felt in your entire life. And then everything will feel possible. And that's what you're going to feel. You're, you're going to feel the potential and the excitement because you created something. Um, you made that change in your life. And then you're going to start tracking your net worth and you're going to see that number go up just a little bit and you'll be off to the races. Yeah. So Grant, tell everybody about your brand new book, how they can pick up a copy and how they can stay in touch with you. Yeah, totally. Thanks. Uh, So this is uh, Financial Freedom, a proven path to all the money you'll ever need. This bright blue book. Um, You can get it wherever books are sold today. Go into your local Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore. Support your local bookstore. They're disappearing like flies. So go in and wherever you shop, ask them for a copy of the book. Uh, They probably have it. If they don't have it, they'll order it for you. Um, If you can't do that or you don't want to do that, check out Amazon. Just search Financial Freedom. It's the bright blue book that's going to come up first. Or you can check out financialfreedombook.com to learn more, uh, to read more about it, to see all the links to where it's for sale, uh, and to check out the calculators as well. The calculators are all completely free. Uh, You know What we talked about today, there's calculators so you can do all this stuff that work on your phone. Uh, You can bookmark them. You can keep them in your pocket when you're in the store and you're asking yourself, is this worth it? You can answer that question now with these free calculators. And yeah, check it out, financialfreedombook.com. I'm so pumped. Um, I I can't wait to hear what you think about it. Um, I wrote it for you. Uh, I hope it helps. Um, I know it's, it's already helping some people. And yeah, you can find me at Millennial Money on Twitter. Millennialmoney.com is my blog. But check out the book because honestly, like while I love my blog, the – Everything you need to know that I've ever thought and written about money is in here. And that's why I wrote it because um, it takes a long time to go through 300 blog posts, whereas you can sit down and read this in a couple of hours. Uh, and you can also, like I said, leave it on your kitchen table so your partner sees it you know, or give it to a friend. or you know, Maybe you already got your money together. Uh, it could be the perfect thing that you can give to someone and, and, and you know, get them excited about you know, turning their own life around. Because everyone deserves a life that they love. So That's real. That's real. Grant, we appreciate you coming back on the show, sharing this wealth of information with our audience today. Thank you. Dude, it's a real pleasure. It's great to see you again. Huge fan. And I can't wait to see you uh, in Chicago on the book tour, man.